Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Thank you of Living and Loving with yours truly, Monique McCall. Such an exciting day. Uh, I am country music recording artist, singer, songwriter, and I am so, so excited to have a really special guest with me here today. He is a pioneer and the father of digital art, an author, father of two beautiful children who we're going to talk about as well because they have exciting things happening just like their daddy. And he's been on many publications. His art has been found in the likes of vodka, Coca-Cola, uh, Disney, everywhere you can imagine, the Grammy Awards, which I'm really excited to talk about as an artist. So please welcome here with me today, Mr. Lawrence Gartell. How are you, Lawrence? Hi there, Monique. Good morning, good morning. It's a beautiful day today after that really torrential rain we had yesterday. So it's nice to see the sun out today. It is. It's a, It's finally peeking through. But I do have to say, I love a rainy day. Yes, 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 yes. It has inspired many songs, like Singing in the Rain, for instance, right? It has inspired a lot of art, you know, because here today we're going to talk about living and loving. We're going to talk about how you've been out living and loving through your art and, and on yes. many journeys. So I'm really excited to hear about that. Does the rain help you inspire? I think the rain is cleansing, personally. I guess for you art. Know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't always need sunshine. Like somebody said to me, uh, like I, I, I grabbed a few hours of sun yesterday mm -hmm. and someone said, because I said uh, I was taking a break and they said, well, it's good to know that even you take a break. And I said, you know, John Cage, the composer, once said that rests are as important as notes. So yes. the silence is very important as well as the noise, right? So well, I I guess get into that with you because I do believe it's in the silence where you really get a lot of brilliant ideas. So yes, correct. We I will talk, we will talk about that rest and okay. because I know that that's been a big piece of this show. But first, tell me a little bit about um, what you've done in the past and then what you're doing today. Oh my. Well, it's been a long and, you know, I think I'm going to like do this by like quoting songs, Monique. So okay. it, it has references. So first of all, like the Beatles, the long and winding road. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, life should be a long and winding road. And it has many twists and turns and it goes through many different incarnations and you start one way, you come out another, and you know, there's the idea, and I'll say this to you, that there is something called predictability, which people really, I think most people latch on to. They want to be safe, they want to be secure, and they want life to be predictable. Uh, unfortunately for an artist, uh, that does not work. You always have to be ready for the surprise. You have to really be open to new things, new experiences, new people, new situations. And that is where the excitement comes in. And that's what gives you and draws the inspiration to your work. And is and, that what you attribute your success to with, uh, you know, this, this ability yeah. to just continue to stay in the excitement and continue to be inspired and, and just yeah. trust in that without, you know, trying to be predictable. A hundred percent. I have to say that you never know what's going to happen next. If you're sitting and doing the same thing, predicting that, you know, dare I say, you have a real job. Um, I never had a real job in my life. And uh, it's been like I was thinking about that. I mean, some people could say that I've been retired my whole life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and retired means you're stopping one thing and you're just at rest. Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely not the case, you know. So um, the idea of I probably have had a billion jobs, not just, you know, saying you had a job. I've had a billion jobs. Right. And the idea of it is that every single one of them was exciting. And, uh, that's, and that's, that's, you know, you're the ultimate artistic entrepreneur. So yes. I think that's one of the hardest jobs you can possibly have beyond parenting, which, you know, but um, I'm yes. an artist as well. And I know how difficult that is to manage the creative side, the business side. And you've done a brilliant job at that. I mean, you have had 
some of the most incredible experiences and incredible journeys. And I'd love for you to tell me about one of those. What is your, I'm sure this is hard to uh, probably isolate, but what is the favorite journey that you took and the favorite piece of, of work that you've created? Well, I'll, that's a very good question. I like that one a lot. Um, I've had many, I have to say. And of course, you know, to be on the red carpet of the Grammy Awards with 30,000 of the greatest names in entertainment for our civilization. And there's Lawrence Gartel on the same red carpet as the singular visual artist that represents all these 30,000 people mm -hmm. in creating the Grammy statue and the iconic image that represents them. Uh, that's huge. Yeah, so, that's bigger than huge. That is unbelievable. And I know that Grammy statue, so yeah. beautiful, so colorful. I know you have a picture sitting in front of you, don't you? Yes, I have the cover of the, the um, program guide, which also was the VIP tickets, the poster, the invitation, uh, and that's this. Look at that. That is stunning. I mean, so, what was going through your mind as you were creating that? Uh, you know, it's an interesting thing because basically my, my thought about this was I'm going to create something that they've never seen before. And that was my goal. And now I'm trying to get it straight. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. I, I wanted to create something they've never seen before. That's the, that was the idea and the mission of this work was, was they never saw anything like this before and they never will. And, uh, and it becomes iconic. So the idea about making something iconic is something that no one's ever seen before and no one ever will. You certainly now is that something that you apply to every one of the pieces yes. that you've done? Yes. Yeah. I, I'll give you another funny, ex, uh, just recent, a recent project, because people don't know all the projects. They just know, you know, the, the major big highlights. But I was just asked to create the packaging for a Russian scientist skincare product, of all things, right? So it turned out, you know, and talk about synchronicity and the 1111 awareness, which is yes. a whole other story, right? Is the idea that I got this project. Angel numbers. What's that? I said those angel numbers, they pop up all the time. They're, they're, they're around me constantly. It's not even like a coincidence anymore. It happens all the time, right? So the idea was, hold on, I can't take it. Uh, Lawrence? Oof, what happened? Uh oh. Oh no. All right, we're having some technical difficulties. Lawrence hit something on his end. So let's I'll be see. back. There he is. Hi, Lawrence. Hi there. I'm loading up. Are you loading up on carbs? Here we are. You see me? I lost you. I can't see you, Lawrence. No? No. You have two oh now. Oh, my God. God. Hold on. on. Okay. Yeah. There you are. Okay. We'll switch um, streams, and we will remove this one. And here I am back with Lawrence Gartel. There you are. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. I got I got another call that came in and bounced us. You got to love these podcasts. You know, they're always- We should be the priority to my phone. I have to tell it that next time. <laughs> yeah, put me on priority mode, would you? So you were speaking- I, I don't, I, you know, <laughs> the technical universe, you know? I know. Well, you were speaking about angel numbers and, and how um, you know that's coming in for you as of yeah. Late. So what was I saying? I was I interrupted myself. Yes, Sorry have, about that. Um, Russian, the Russian skincare project. Angel, the, oh, the Russian. So the Russian, the, the, the Russian scientists had me design uh, a skincare product for him. The packaging, and it happened at the time when I was the judge for the London. Uh, Creative Arts Awards in London, and there were 500 people that submitted, and I was the judge. 
And it all had to do with packaging and rebranding and that sort of thing. And I looked at these 500 pieces and I got to tell you, nothing looked like my work whatsoever. Not at all. Nothing. And it was really kind of interesting that that happened at the exact same precise time that I got this project. I was the judge. So, wow. you know, if I was to judge myself versus everything else I saw, I would say that Lawrence Gartel's work looks like nobody else's. That's, I was great. That's also critical to the project. Yes. You know? Definitely. So, anyway, I think that that was from a question that you asked, but I don't remember what it was. I, I wanted to know what was the best journey that you've been on. You know, we probably. The best journey. And the favorite. Okay. Favorite so I mentioned, along yeah, I it. mentioned the Grammys. Yes. Um, but I would say that I went to India to make a Bollywood film for Universal. Mm -hmm. And I was in India for almost two months. And I say that it was the worst, horrible, most difficult, awful, most fantastic trip I've ever been on. All right. And, and I met all sorts of people there. I saw cultures that I never experienced. Everyone was wearing a sari. And I said, I just want to see a woman in pants for two seconds, please. And so, there was not a single woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, no, no, no. So it made me realize why I could never get a tattoo because I would have a panic attack. You know, if it was on the right arm I'd want it on the left I, I I just want you know like I my desire was not fulfilled or it was like I couldn't I feel like I'm in control of a lot of things mm -hmm. and I felt like I couldn't control the situation of nobody in pants how crazy is that that is definitely interesting. And it's interesting that your focus was on that. So let's go back to this control thing. So that's yeah. kind of fascinating for me being an artist, because I believe that probably a lot of your great works came from not being in control. Is that correct? Uh, I, you know, I have to say that it's, it's really, you know, the art itself is not really about control or not control. It's really a matter of activation. Mm -hmm. and action versus like control or not control. Because I think, um, you know, the art that I did create from India was based on the inspiration of what I saw. And it was fantastic. And, you know, I, I was in situations and environments that I never saw before. I was like a baby. So it was like I, in that letting go and just letting everything come in that you were inspired to create something. In that instance, yes. In mm -hmm. that instance, yes, because I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So that's an, that's a situation where I had no idea what I was going to do. I didn't know where I was going to go. I was uh, uh, subject to a driver and a manager taking me to different places and I had a videographer with me who had a big camera and they wouldn't let him into any of the temples so his coming with me was a giant waste we couldn't he couldn't get into temples and therefore his footage which was minimal only from the outside uh, was useless to me. So I shot everything myself on the, on a uh, Minolt, Konica Minolta five megabyte camera. And that's what I used. And my camera was so hot. You still have all these images as well, don't you? Oh my God, I've got thousands. I was in, you know, traveling. They're all in folders, every temple, every city, every everything. I have everything, of course. I'd love to see those. And now I know you did take me on a field trip recently to the Hard Rock and we saw your Legends of Rock series, which was yeah. just something unbelievable. And as an artist, I was in awe. I'm standing there looking at this. So you have, you know, the depiction of all the vocalists and then you have the depiction of the percussion and you have the depiction of the strings and then, okay, I'm missing one. And keyboards. then, and the keyboards, that's right. I always forget all four also. I don't know, it's either hit or miss. I either remember them or I don't. And yeah. it, there's 
there's so much detail, there's so much going on. And I, I, I stood there with you and I was just in awe of how much must have been going on in your mind as you were creating these pieces. And I do encourage everyone listening today to head down to the Hard Rock. If you're in Florida, if you get here, go see the Legends of Rock series from Lawrence because it will definitely inspire you. It'll get you thinking, it'll get your, your mind and your emotions moving. So tell me more about what was going on for you as you created that. Well, you know, it's funny because we didn't come up with a plan to say, all right, Garchel, here's what you're going to do. Isn't that interesting? They did not say that to me. I was the one who came up with that concept. They just said, we love your art. We, we have to have it in the lobby. And what do you think? And through like a metamorphosis, let's just say, and, and I'll say this to you as well. I was invited, this is the story. They have something called the vault up in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And that's where they house all their collection of memorabilia. And they said, you need to head up there. And I said, well, I can't right now. I'm on another project, but maybe later on. And then when I contacted them, they said, no, we're moving it down, good news for you, but it's gonna take a few months. We're moving it down to your area, which is near the Hard Rock. Which so is funny. they invited yeah. me to take a behind, yeah. you know, behind the scenes tour. And I'm talking about seeing Elvis Presley's army jacket, things like that, Elton John's glasses, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Jack Jackson's jacket, uh, things like that, when they got in Aretha Franklin's hat right after she passed away, mm -hmm. she got, they got the hat. It was just yeah. remarkable to see, and they have maybe 300 guitars. They have a guitar that Jimi Hendrix burnt. They have the writing of Wild Horses, which was not written and by the Rolling Stones. And then they have Stones. The Legends of Rock by Lawrence Gartell. And I was just wondering, how do you feel about that? I know young man growing up in New York City, did you ever imagine that this is where you'd be today? Well, I'm gonna tell you a little story. In 1975, mm -hmm. you know, I was hanging around listening to the music of punk rockers. That's kind of my my base Here's with on. Uh, Joey Ramone and Debbie Harry and Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols and Steve Bader's of the Dead Boys. And so I was rooted in this wild, radical music, right? Growing up. But I used to drive to Max's Kansas City and CBGB's where these people performed Wendy O. Williams from the Plasmatics. I used to drive my giant Lincoln Continental Mark IV it was like a boat with white walls, white interior, uh, white exterior and white top uh, moon roof not sunroof, moonroof, because it opened up and there was no glass. Sure. It was a boat. It was like, you know, and then I would wear a white fur coat. I was completely freaking outrageous. <laughs> and now is this, is this after you, you know, you were the pioneer, the founder of digital art, or this is before? That was the beginnings of it. That was the beginnings of it. That was 1975. That was like well, the beginnings right. when I discovered you digital art. You didn't just wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm just going to do digital art. How did we oh, get? No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But I'll, I'll tell you that story in a minute. But my point that I want to say about 1975, pivotal was that my friend Kevin and I, we were, we were um, colleagues at the School of Visual Arts together. We went to school together, college together, arts, art school together. I went to the New York International Auto Show and I saw a car that was so outrageous. It was called a Studs Blackhawk. I'll never forget it because it made that kind of impression, right? And I said, how much is this car? And it was like a, a, a tire on the back that was gold. Everything had gold appointments. It was outrageous. And you had to like 
get in under the red ropes. You had to talk your way through to the person who was showing it to say, mm-hmm. oh, I'm interested, you know, this sort of thing. I was a kid. I was like, how old was I? 19. And I was, just I was a- like so <laughs> overwhelmed by this car. Why am I going on about this? Because in 2013, I was the feature of the New York Auto Show with my own pavilion of 30,000 square feet and art cars and motorcycles. And I trumped that car a thousand times over, 10,000, a hundred times over, maybe a million times over. You know, so when you talk about highlights to me, that is such a glorious moment that, you know, some people know, some people. 300,000 people saw my cars at the New York Auto Show. I was the feature. They used me to promote the whole entire it event. All, it was all over the cars. I, I remember seeing the depictions of that. And, yeah. and but, but what I want to know is, how did you just become the pioneer of digital art? You, you, know, you didn't just wake up one morning. This must have happened over time. There's got to be a story in there. Look at that. There is a story. And the story goes back to your podcast about living and loving. Okay. So I had a high school girlfriend who I was dating for many years. And she went up to uh, the University of Buffalo to take classes for psychology, which is what she wanted to study. And I said, well, in order to try to save this relationship, I need to go up there. Otherwise, she's going to find somebody else. She's very, you know, at this, yeah. that stage, cute, pretty, young, vibrant. I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to lose her. And I better get up there and I better, like, you know, do what I need to do. <laughs> so they didn't accept me into the University of Buffalo. I went to Buff State instead. And I was sitting in the back of a classroom watching a Charlie Chaplin movie. And someone tapped me on the shoulder and he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to take a still picture of a moving image. And he goes, well, we have a center down here that does stuff kind of like that. I said, really? He goes, yeah. Why don't you come to this address at eight o'clock at night? It was in the worst neighborhood in the world. I thought like I was being set up to lose my car, my wallet, my camera get hit over the hill, who knows, who knows, who knows. Anyway, I followed my instinct and I went. And there in 1976, I guess, because it was the the, fall, the uh, spring, I went there and they introduced me to a center called Media Study Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And they said, here's the system. It was a computer system. It was an analog computer system. Wow. And they said, go go work. And I said, go work. I don't even know what to do. He goes, just turn those knobs and buttons and figure it out. Well, here it is. April 1976. And that is my the first works. I have them. I discovered them after looking through all my archives. And I call this series Day One, Hour One. I have it. That is unbelievable. And so from there, you just followed your heart with this girl, followed your heart with what you wanted to do. You're out living and loving. And there you have it. The first renderings of digital art from the father of digital art. So what came right after that? What was your first job? What year was that? I mean, I'm sure you- This was 76. Mm -hmm. There was no other place to do this stuff, except that I found out there was a similar situation in Binghamton, New York, called uh, the Experimental Television Center. And that's basically, I started going up there. I got grants to go back year after year, but there was no place, there were no personal computers, there was nothing. So that was the amazing part. So I had to suffer through like waiting a year. I created a year's worth of work and then tried to do something with it. And along the way in 1979, I did the cover of Videography Magazine, which is three years later. So I guess I was 22 years old. And it came out the day that 
Yankee catcher Thurman Munson died in a plane crash because the cover mm -hmm. was Thurman Munson. Uh -huh. I mean, talk about coincidences, 11-11 alignment and everything else. It started all the way back there. But now, do you believe that it's a coincidence or there are no coincidences? There are no coincidences. Listen, first of all, as shocking as it is, someone said to me, he wanted me to write, I have a Russian colleague, and he introduced me to a digital artist in Russia, and he said, speak to the this girl as the father of digital art to the daughter of digital art. He said, write something. And I wrote him something and I said, listen, I can't write anything. I have questions first. Questions are more important than answers. And he said to me, are you the god of digital art or are you the father of digital art? And you know what my response was? Gee. God, art, E-L, electronic, Gartel. Gartel is the god of digital art. And you certainly are the god of digital art and, you, and you're doing it with love and the love of God, which is, is fantastic. And that alignment with the angel numbers, it's all come together for you. Yes. And now you're sharing your love through this beautiful little contraption, which you shared with me when I went and saw you. And I think the oh, yes. beauty, that moment was, you know, I'm seeing angel numbers a lot as well. And it was such an aha moment for me because when I got to your house, you gave me a gift and you yes. wrapped it in Christmas paper. And it was like, wow, I can't believe you did that. Nobody does it. Only a couple people have done that. And I know that it's something special because I wrote a song called Every Day is Christmas and you didn't know that. But it just happened that um, you gave me a Christmas present in you know the middle of spring. And I love this. Thing. <laughs> this, is the, this is my Christmas present from Lawrence Gartel. And it's the Shishibo. And you can get this at Amazon. And what a fun um, contraption. And it, it's so beautiful. I, I really can't put it down. You know, at night I keep it by my bed and I'm constantly playing with this. But how did you come up with this idea? Well, you know, first of all, interesting. It's also in every single Barnes and Noble in the country. So yeah. when people say, where do I get it? I say, well, go to Amazon. You can order it there. Or if you want to touch it and actually physically see it, go to Barnes and Noble. So it's in every Barnes and Noble in the United States. And uh, it would be in more places if we didn't have COVID, of course. Sure. But I will tell you that, you know, you can find it in any like uh, decent uh, toy store that really uh, these new toy stores sort of have a um, learning side to it versus just playing with a Barbie. You know, there's, there's things for the imagination, for the mind to expand for young people, you know, so it's great for children of all ages. And that's but the way you, that it happened. That's what that's what been a very successful piece for you, Lawrence, is that you have been able to help people imagine and and you know get them thinking through your work, through the shishibo, through you know the color schemes and and what you put into your digital artwork. I have so many new ideas for this. It's not even funny. I can't really say because I'm going to make a presentation on Thursday. And it's something that just sort of happened. And I see an yet another new direction. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to keep reinventing. And that's what people say. How do you keep inventing? Because, you know, as you know, most artists, they get a style. They get comfortable with that style. And that's what they sell. And they're known for a style. So can and I ask you a I question? My style. I don't, want to, I don't want to lose this because I have a really good question for you. Yeah. Um, you say that you keep inventing, but are you are you constantly inventing or are you just kind of following your heart or where the universe leads you? I think the answer is within all of what you just said. You know, I don't know. I, I don't I'm not sitting here with a pen and pencil thinking up this stuff. It just happens. You know, right. one thing dovetails into another. Right. And so then how do you back, execute it? It goes back to that piece in the beginning of the predictability. You're not predicting anything. You're not trying. You're just letting it happen. Yes, that is true. That is 100% true. It, it, it's a journey on 
the unknown. And I don't want to know what tomorrow is, actually. I don't want to know what tomorrow is. I want to create tomorrow. So you looks like you I'm creating found, today. You have found your success and your magic in the present and in the living in the now. Would you say that's accurate? That's uh, write that down because that's very important. Please. Yeah. I don't have I'm holding my camera and my other hand is here. But I would like you to write that down because that is very much the situation. Yes. Yeah, it is. You got to follow your your bliss, your heart, your, you know, be open. Just be open to like what's going on. I, I have to say it like that. I don't know. This is like my journey. I, I tell you something. Someone called up the other day and they said, hi, uh, Mr. Gartel, I'm calling in regards to Medicare and we want to like sign. I said, my father's been dead for years. And they said, no, 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 you. I went, me? I'm like, how did I get this old? I can't even, I, I don't even believe it. I don't even understand it, you know? It's so crazy. I thought they were calling for my father. What do you mean, Medicare? What are you talking about? Well, you, you know. know you're not that old and you still have so much more to give. And so I'm really excited about this. I really enjoy this. So I thank you again. And I think I've discovered a new shape. I, I, I only Ooh. have 60 more to go. I think I've got 10 out of the 70. So <laughs> I recommend everybody gets one of these, get one um, for your children. Yeah. And speaking of children, uh, I know you have two beautiful children. They are doing great things. Your daughter's an artist as well, a different kind of artist. And I feel like your son is an artist in fashion as well because yes. he opened a new store in Del Rey. Is it called yeah. Headache? Is that correct? It's called Headache Trading. It's uh, directly across from the Colony Hotel. That's the best way to give the directions. Well, I'm going to head down Atlantic. To head out. I'd love to go with you. Yes, uh, we'll give you a tour. Sure. Absolutely, hundred percent. Describe his fashion. I, listen, the kid, he he personally was taking me to stores when he was fourteen years old. We go down to Miami and see these sneaker shops that were very uh, sort of in the vanguard because it wasn't like going to the mall and finding the typical sneakers. These were limited editions and he was doing that since he's 14 years old and uh, you know i say my god you i just realized you're doing this half your life already that's and incredible I, I, and he learned that by watching you and i did see some images of his uh pieces and his sneakers they're so colorful they're exciting it's like your digital it, artwork yes well he's following his own path plus he's got his own sage garments a uh, line of shirts that he's designing himself now. So he's moving more into the design aspect of things and God knows what will happen from there. And he's open too. It's the same sort of thing. It's You have to be open for the vessel of unpredictability, which will lead you to the next thing. And you'll like this, uh, Monique. He is going to start. I don't know if I should say this or not, because maybe it's too jumping the gun, but he wants to start a running club. Yes. Where I'm people all, will meet I'm and all, run and come back to the store and whatever. I mean, isn't that fabulous? I, I'm, I'm all in, but I want to run in a pair of those colorful sneakers because I, <laughs> I think they probably make me run faster. You know, he's definitely the kind of headache I like to have. Ah, you're funny. That's great. Yes, Perfect and, line. And I know I'm you're going to tell him you said that. She, yeah, tell him I said that. That should be his advertisement. The kind of headache everybody needs to have and would like to have kind of headache everyone wants to have that's great <laughs> and then now i know your daughter she's fabulous with color as well she's a hairstylist but i've seen yes. some of her work so you must be so proud of your children they've really um garnered a lot of what you've done and they've been able to apply it to different avenues but in the same vein keep the integrity of what it is that their father has created well, you know, I, I guess I taught them to follow their passion, to mm -hmm. do what you love. And if you do it, if you have that, of course, it's probably in their DNA. I can't, you know, say that. But, you know, if they see all the crazy, kooky people that I've met along the way that they, you know, they're not afraid of anything. I, I showed them so many nutty, crazy people that came into my life. And I, that's a whole nother book. Let me say that. But, uh <laughs> You know, uh, there's nothing to fear at all. And you have to embrace the unknown. 
that's another thing that's very hard for people, Monique, is to embrace the unknown. And I think that's a great point. And, and, and you embracing the unknown and you being able to not predict and just get out there and live and love, you've inspired so many. You've inspired your own children. You've inspired me in so many ways, just watching what it is you do and you know the intricacy of your work. And, and, and your spirit and the love that you put out there. So thank you so much, Lawrence. I'm so happy you could join me today. I did thank wanna you. touch on one more piece because it's in the color and in the beauty of that color that you create that I think moves people. And there was a publication that I was just blown away when you shared it with me. It was the Warhol versus Gartel. Oh yeah, yeah, where's my book? Where did my Warhol book go? Now, would you say yeah. that one of the pinnacles of your career, I mean, to be yeah. aligned with Warhol or Warhol to be aligned with you, you know, maybe it was well, for him as well. Well, so the idea about that, I'm going to get a book, but I, I don't have one like I'm, I'm shocked. I don't have one handy. I guess I sold out whatever or, or they're there, but I do have one. So let me let me go into the archive. And, and get the book. So basically the idea about that was that I taught Andy Warhol how to make the artwork for Debbie Harry's mm -hmm. album cover. Mm -hmm. And that was in 1985. We're going into the darkness here mm -hmm. for a second. Oh, I got something Living else to show after you. Dark. <laughs> What's that? Living and loving after dark. Living and loving after dark. Yes. Hold on, let me get a book. Hold on. And we are in the archives of Mr. Lawrence Gartell. Aren't we lucky? There's got to be so many, so many interesting, Sorry. fascinating things in that room. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're coming out. Coming out in that. That was a song by um, Gloria oh, Stefan, on, right? Now. Coming out. <laughs> in the dark. Yeah, I sang the other one. All right. Okay. Hold this up. Let's see. Warhol versus Gartel. Yeah. Here it is. So here's the book. Nice. Warhol versus Gartel. And there's, of course, the great picture, which hopefully I'll be able to share with you. Right. Can you see this? I can see you. Look at you. There's Warhol. There's you. So would you say that that is one of the pinnacles of your career? Well, I, you know, it's a cool thing. It's actually ongoing. The show was running from 19, uh, 2016 to present time in museums around Italy. And the book comes from the Luca Museum and written by the director of the museum, Maurizio Vanni. And it was in, when I was there in 2017, it was in Spoleto, it was in Lecce down at the bottom there. Yeah. And uh, it was supposed to be in Monza and, and many, other, many other locations on the uh, Italian Riviera. It was, it's fantastic. And then it all stopped because of COVID. They stopped it. So hopefully when, uh, when things go back to normal, I'll be able to go back and give some lectures and talk about it. People will lined up in these well, museums outside to get in to see the work. If you need a later, I'm happy to go along with you. Sounds like a plan. Definitely. Fabulous. So Lawrence, fascinating life, fascinating story. <laughs> I mean, Andy Warhol, the cover of Smithsonian, your work is all over throughout museums. You've been in thousands of publications, covers of magazines. You've got the legends of rock at Hard Rock. I mean, every big company you can think of, Coca-Cola, you know. Philip Morris. What, I'm I, was, sorry. I was the, the thing about Philip Morris was they had a campaign called Philip Morris Light American. And I was the Light American. So we threw parties with DJs uh, in major cities in Hamburg, Berlin, Cologne, Munich. It was unbelievable. So 
it was really a super great time. So, you know, to say what's my favorite, I, you know, the whole thing has been fantastic. I just want more of it. I'm like a an adre- adrenaline junkie on my own, like like the, the famous line from Scarface, don't get high on your own supply. You know, well, my supply has been pretty, pretty fun. I have to say. You've got to keep that supply going because you are an adrenaline junkie. And I think that is the best message. You know, just get out there, live, love, follow your heart, do what it is you love, and the rest will follow. So that's true. So much, Lawrence. What a beautiful, beautiful message for the listeners. I'm so happy you could join me today. Before we go, though, I have one final question that I ask everyone. And I know this is really tough, but I know you're going to have a fabulous answer. But as a musician and an artist, I like to always know um, because I think it really tells a lot about the person and your spirit and, and what you've done along the way. But what one one song, if you could choose one, um, speaks to your heart and sums up the essence of your being? Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo. What song? Well, I got to tell you, during this... This is not my answer, but I'll tell you what's playing right now because we're always about in the moment, Mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And I'm listening to you two, with or without you. With or without you. Can you sing some? What's that? Can you sing some of the song? With or without you. Louder. Hey Google, (laughs) louder. (laughs) <laughs> I'll let them sing. Hey, Google, louder. With oh, or- they got shy on me. How do you like that's that? All right. So with or without you, Lawrence, that's a great song. And you know what? I think so. Hey, Google, off. This world would be so different without you, but with you, it has been fantastic. And so has this this um, um, episode of times. Loving. So thank you so much for joining me. If you'll just stay on, I want to um, continue our conversation and okay. catch up. Well, it's been a while. So everyone, you can check me out here 4 p.m. on Thursdays, Living and Loving with Monique McCall. We had Lawrence Gartell today, and he has shared such a beautiful message of don't try to predict things. Live in the now. Get out. Live. Love. And the rest will follow. Thank you so much for joining me. Love you all. Have a great day. Thanks, Lawrence.